This is me. Why Michael Gilman? This is me. This is me. Ladies and gentlemen, you are watching This Is Me with your host, D. Curtis, and co-host, Patrick Tonker. Mr. Gilman, welcome to This Is Me. I'm honored to be here this afternoon. Great, great. It is a pleasure for us to have someone of your caliber on the show. Mr. Gilman, who is Mr. Gilman? Uh, my full name is Y. Michael Gilman. And the Y in there stands for Yao, is spelled Y-A-W. Others with the same name spelled there as Y-A-O. And that stands for the first male child born to a, a, a Ghanaian mother, a Ghanaian father. My mother was a Ghanaian. Uh, her father was a Ghanaian. My grandmother, her mother was from Grand Jida County. My father is from Maryland County, Liberia. So I go by the name Yao Michael Gilman. Wow, Michael Gilman. Yeah. Okay. Uh, are there any link with the? Uh, because I know some Iborians that also have the same name Yao and stuff. Are you guys like interrelated somehow across the border? No, that's my that's my first name. So uh, uh, Ghanaian use it, Ivorian use it. Even there was a basketball. Player here, Yao Meng. Yao Meng, <laughs> the, the long Chinese guy. Yeah, the long, the longest Chinese basketballer ever, Yao Meng. So uh, we hold no relationship, nothing. But uh, 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 for the Ghanaian people, it represents again the first male child born on Thursday. And uh, okay. good thing this year, my birthday falls on a Thursday, New Year Eve. So, oh boy! So it, it, your name, your, your name just came came back to yourself, right? So, so, so yeah. Mr. Gilman, you know, in Liberia we say the first child can be stupid, <laughs> and you the first male child. Are you just the first male child? Or are you also the first child? I'm the first child for my mother. Okay. Yeah, and the first male child for my mother. Okay. And the first grandchild for my grandparents on my mother's side. My grandfather was a school teacher. My grandmom didn't go to school, but she was a midwife. She was a baker. Mm -hmm. She was everything in Grand Jida County, Zwedru. So uh, to apply stupid, <laughs> it, it's far-fetched. Uh, 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 you follow me. I don't think you will see stupidity in what I do. Exactly, exactly. So, my librarian people, as well, you're the firstborn. You need to change your mindset. You can be adding nothing to it, you know? So, <laughs> can I just clear that out right here for us? Yeah. Awesome. Mr. Gilman, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I've been going to, trying to scrap the internet to find stuff and pieces on you. And you, you're out there, but you're not really out there. That's one thing I observe. Apart from what you do on, 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 on Facebook and on social media, you're not really out there. So apart from what you do, as, 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 what, what are you into? What, what's your, what are your interests? My interest is what I do, community development, uh, 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 community organizing, bringing people together. I'm a people-oriented person where I believe in the power of the people, uh, of people, lives being transformed uh, through our advocacy, our information dissemination, and uh, understanding actually what the people are about, what their wants are, what their needs are. How do we uh, uh, develop them from one stage to another? Allowing them to, first of all, accept their conditions, know their conditions, accept it, the problems that they go through, and then together, or we can all find a way and means of alleviating those problems. So uh, that's what we do. Uh, you said we are not out there like as in uh, being all over the place on the internet. That's what uh, I meant. Perhaps, perhaps having a rap sheet, you know. No, uh, it's because of I'm a realist, a conservative realist. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
you know, you, you, you do these things for people. It is not about you. It shouldn't be about us. I cannot write a story about a, a talker or a Curtis. And then I put my picture on the story. I cannot congratulate you. And then I put my picture there. Okay? We've seen it around here every day, so that was asking the question. Absolutely. And, and, <laughs> and, and these things, they are digital footprints. They come back after you. Take, for instance, our folks pay homage or go to Liberia every time for vacation, be it what time of the year. We cry that the people are suffering, the people are suffering. But just before coming on here this afternoon, I saw a video from Liberia, from somebody who's visiting Liberia. And they are in a nightclub. Wow. Jamming, I mean, enjoying themselves. And then they will come back and say the people are suffering. But what, what about that video that you left? That's what I said, these are digital footprints that come back to haunt us later on. They, you can delete them, but they are never deleted. They are in some bank in the dirt set there in Arizona. Yeah. For real. Yeah, yeah. they are stored. You're right, though. But anyway, like the platform said, this is me. We we're actually trying to look at the, the, pers the person why Michael Gilman. Can I, can I call you Yahoo? Is that, is that okay with you? Or... Absolutely. Okay, Mr. But the thing Yahoo. about it is, uh, people who call me Yahoo uh -huh. are people who are out of the other knew me from childhood, okay. growing up wow. in Zwedu, or we went to school together uh, 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 at Tuckman High, at uh, Don Bosco Polytechnic, and uh, you know, uh, we've come a long way. But I, uh, I would that. accept you calling me Yao. I, just, I, I stay in my line. You're not going to school with a man. I will stay in my line. <laughs> you're not playing my way to get up. You're not for over rest together. Then you won't call a man. You own not right here to call a man. I'll stay in my lane. I'll stay in my lane. I'll stay in my place. We're going to even play free time ball together. Eh, the man I keep your press a boo here, then you won't call him out. No, you cannot call a man. Well, Mr. Gilman, thanks for sharing your interest with us. Tell us a little bit about your family. Oh, wow. That's family is family is all that everyone, anyone, uh, uh, should cherish, mm -hmm. can cherish. Uh, I've known my wife for over 40 years now. We've been married over 26 years, going on 27. This one, I bless you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, we have four beautiful daughters, in fact, my oldest daughter is graduating from the University of Liberia tomorrow in nursing, wow. in nursing and midwifery. Congratulations. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. All of my girls are doing marvelously well. Uh, uh, the one who is almost my birthday, she's going to be turning 20 on uh, December 30th, one day to my birthday. She's going to school at Ferris State University here in uh, Michigan, studying forensic science. She, she wow. wants to investigate like her dad does. <laughs> that, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, you know. And uh, the young one, she's 12 going on 13. She's in middle school. And they're all doing well. My family uh, uh, is all together here in the United States of America. I left. Liberia in 2000, left my wife and my kids back home. Uh, my wife was pregnant when I left, and uh, she came, she joined me later on in 2007. Uh, I called it seven years, seven months when she came to join me. And then my daughters, my daughters would come 15 years after. Uh, 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 that was the first time I even saw the one that I left my wife pregnant with. You know, wow. yeah, I named her after me. She's Yawin Michael Lita Gilman. And, and when did she did she come to America? She came to America October twenty second, twenty fifteen. Hmm. Yeah. Let's see. 
is she this person here you're talking about or not? Hold on. We got something we want you to see so you can tell us about it. Right. And why I put that up, Mr. Gilman, you know, the African saying that said that, you know, uh, a man that have a lot of daughters got good investment. Was this plan for you to just have all four daughters because of the investment? You know, you want to get your return? What, what, what was the plan? <laughs> <laughs> the plan was to have a wild Michael Gilman. Every attempt, <laughs> every attempt was... Every attempt fell. It was a girl. <laughs> so so you, you, just, you just ended up giving the last one a name. Right. Uh, uh, she's not the last one. She's uh, uh, the third. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. My, my oldest is Gigi. The middle one is named after my daughter. Let's say the second, uh, uh, Shirley, Shirley Gilman. And then Yawin, Michael Lita. And then the last one is named after my wife and my aunt. So I named the last one Gracie Ruth Gilman. Okay. Yeah, right. and uh, Gracie Ruth is one name, Gracie Dash Ruth Gilman. Oh, okay, okay, not yeah. like two separate names. Okay, no, no, smart. All right, Mister Gilman, thanks for sharing that. Let me let me play this. Are you seeing this? This this was the arrival of my daughter, Michael Leader, and uh, the camera guy there was Kwame Opa Weeks, my uncle, my mom, okay. younger, younger brother, and it was a joyous occasion. Uh, 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 you know. Let me tell you something, what happened here. Uh -huh. We got at JFK that morning. Uh, uh, she traveled alone on the uh -huh. flight. She was underage and uh, she had to come under the care of the, uh -huh. of the of, uh, uh, SN Brussels uh, uh, staff. Uh -huh. So we were there, Kwame and I, people coming out. We were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and then the lady came out with my name uh -huh. on a postcard. Let's see, like a signboard. Mm -hmm. And then I went running there. And there was my daughter. She took my ID card, made sure I got verified and checked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then she turned my daughter over to me, and Kwame was on camera, you know, taping everything up. It was, it was I mean, it was, it was like, a uh, uh, reality, you know, dream come true. I, I long for this moment. I even had a social media Facebook posting mm. where mm. I don't remember exactly, but then I was like, uh, complete this sentence for me, which I was trying to, you know, talk about the family being complete, coming together, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, and uh, yeah, this, this, this was huge. And I, I cherish the moment. Every time I see this video, I see this, I say, yeah, you know. No, Mr. Thanks Gilman. for sharing that interesting moment with us. Absolutely. Pastor, go ahead. Yeah, I just, as, as from one day to the next, and well, I'm a new dad in a way, and whenever I go out from my kids for a while and I come back, even if they are asleep, I got to enter the room and just, just look at them. What, what emotion went, went to you that, at that instant when you saw your daughter? Oh, man. That was 15 years in the making. You know, uh, never had a moment to pick her up when she was a baby, to see her crawl, to see her walk, that first step. Never, never, never had those moments. To see her walk out of the plane into my arms, that warm embrace, that daddy's daughter bear hug. Uh, it was, it was, it was magnificent. And people, I'm becoming emotional because this could have broken me down. It could have broken anybody down, not having your family together. Yeah. You know, one who loves his family. That was, that was a moment of joy, of, of you know, restoration of hope, uh, 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 you know, reclaiming family value that this country represents. And uh, that, that, this that's is it, me. Man. This is me. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> this is me. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, Mr. Gilman going to dive deeper into the marriage. He said, Mr. Gilman, correct me if I'm wrong. You've known your wife for 40 years? Absolutely. And then how long you guys been married? We've been married almost 27. 27 okay, we years. got something to show you guys and show Mr. Gilman. 
and then he would talk to us about it. So don't hit that button. Don't go nowhere. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Your jubilation and celebration. Are you planning a wedding, celebrating an anniversary, or a graduation party? How about that crowd pulling concert? Book D. Curtis now for an unforgettable experience. With D. Curtis as your master of ceremony, your event is guaranteed to leave an impression. Book now. Book D. Curtis at bookdcurtis2018gmail.com or call 804 714 7850. D. Curtis, your event is his business. Oh, so you're just gonna watch this show all by yourself and not share it? Come on now, share the page. Subscribe. This is me. Well, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. You are watching This Is Me with uh, your host, D. Curtis and Patrick Talker. Our guest today is no other but Mr. Gilman. We left off where he was telling us about his wife. And now we're about to show him something that he's going to see for the very first time. He didn't know we got this, but we got stuff on you, Mr. Gilman. Let's see. Mr. Gilman, look at this. Oh, wow. Hey, hello, Bob. That, 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 was, that, was, that was June 10th, 1994. <laughs> at the Lady of Lebanon, uh, uh, St. Joseph's Parish, right there on Capitol Hill, Monrovia, Liberia. Talk, talk to me about your sexy eye. Look at your sexy eye, Mr. Gilman. This was uh, 14 years coming, hmm. 1980 to 1994. And wow. uh, on this day, I married my best friend, uh, uh, who will become a wife for all these years. You know, again, courtship, friendship, 40, marriage, 20, going on 27. And uh, you just you just took took me back to to that day. The reception was at the Moravia City Hall, mm. Mm. where we had over three hundred guests coming in attending. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, we and, were. And, and, and for, for me, I a little picture of Nancy. I see the 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 whole face, man, looking at one. That's why. That's why I'm telling you. Job. And uh, this was our yeah. first wedding anniversary. That's the Inquirer newspaper right there. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got married on my second daughter's birthday, June 10th. Okay. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. And she's, she's inserted right there in the photo, Shirley, Shirley Gilman. Yeah. So. These are good memories, though. These, these are yeah. very good memories. Yeah, these, they are. Yeah, but, Mr. Gilman, quick question. Why, whenever you will have observed your. Yeah. <laughs> it it more it, it, it more than one resource. Yeah. <laughs> that's you know, that's you know, you know, you know, uh uh the Bible says who he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Yeah. Uh yeah. you don't you don't go to your to your wedding day, to your marriage and you <laughs> like like you are forced into it, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. This exemplifies and embodies uh, 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 family values. Yeah. You certainly have a lot of, you know, experience under your belt. So what's your advice to young couples out there? Nowadays, people see relationship as something that is in the supermarkets, in a liquor store, in a mall, in a restaurant. All right. You find a friend that you think, yes, the sure is this is me, right? Yes, exactly. Go ahead, okay, sir. Say, say, you find that special someone, just transform and say, this is it. The road stops here. You know, that person probably may not have been the one you want to be with. Mm -hmm. But then you've gone all out. And other he or she has shown you that they can transform. Either transform themselves or your life. And you look into their characteristics. What interests you the most? What is there? What is missing? And you can complement them. 
by restoring those qualities or bringing about those qualities that you look for, those values. So you got to settle down. At some point. At you some point in time, you got to settle down. Mr. Gilman, what show are you on again? This is me. This is this you is and me. this is We're me. We're going to find out who he is. Right. It's not about you. Great, great. It's not about um, you. It's about me. This no, is no, me. no. It's me. It's you, me. <laughs> this is you and this is me. Anyway, it's, it's, not, about, me. it's not about. It's not about you. It's about me. Yeah, me, me to you. <laughs> well, for for me right now, I just, yeah. I, just don't, I, won't, I won't go beyond behind the screen. Small. I won't go small behind the screen. Let's talk about your childhood. Small. Growing up, like, bro. Tell, tell me how it was like growing up. Oh, oh wow. Uh, uh, as far back as my memory can recollect. Quick question uh, before you start. Sorry, cut yeah. you off. Country ball or city ball? Country city ball. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Which one are country city ball? You either country yeah. ball or you city ball. Right. Or you I was I was, I was, I was, I was, I was born, I was born in Zwedru. Zwedru, uh, 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 Zwedru became a fast booming city in the southeast. Yeah. And growing up in Zwedru, uh, it was like, uh, it was truly, Zwedru truly uh, 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 represented the saying that it takes a village to raise a child. And uh, everybody kind of knew everybody. And uh, the new, the older folks knew people's children, you know, where they live, where they came from, and all of that. And they all helped to instill that discipline, that value into us. To the extent, I'll tell you something, a story and a scar that I carry to this day. Mm-hmm. In 1979, on mm-hmm. Christmas Day, we're talking right after Christmas, right? Mm-hmm. 1979 on Christmas Day. We were a group of kids, probably about 14 of us from the neighborhood, decided to go to the cinema. I tell you. To go watch a movie that afternoon. Oh, your Christmas money. Your Christmas money. And then we went to work and uh, uh, buying candies and toffees and, you know, yeah, everything. in the parking now. Just my money in your pocket. Exactly. And some of us, some of us, including me, bought loose cigarettes. <laughs> yes, we bought loose cigarettes and started puffing. <laughs> yeah, you be bored. And somebody, somebody spotted me. Mm. And they went and told my grandfather. Said, oh, y'all that big man now. <laughs> yeah. So what you mean by that? He said, I saw y'all smoking at the, at the cinema today. And my grandfather said, are you kidding me? He said, yes. So my grandfather told my uncle, this uncle and I share the same birthday, December mm. 31st, mm. Yeah, George Weeks. He told my uncle George Weeks, Uncle George, said, let him go to bed. Make sure you don't break his eyes. Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I, I had gone to bed and sound asleep when I just felt the belt buckle going on, on me. Today oh. I carry a scar on my tie about the size of this. Hmm. Since yeah. 1979. Not, not small whipping. Not small whipping. Okay. That was the first and last time I attempted smoking. Guess, <laughs> guess what kind of cigarette was it? Lucky Strike? It was, it was long called Dumoria. Let me remember the cigarette new that, until today. That's yeah, that, not that, that 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 yeah, that was in Zwedru. And uh, 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 we went to school, St. Philomena Elementary Catholic School. We went to Julie High. 
up to ninth grade. And then uh, when we got promoted to the 10th grade, uh, uh, we went on to, to live in Monrovia. And that's why I said country city ball. Okay. Yeah. Now, now we're I, went on, I went on to live in Monrovia and went to Tottenham High School. And uh, we'll graduate from Tottenham High School in 1985. Yeah. I was on 12th Street. I was on Old Road, Old Road to 14th Street to 12th Street. And then ended up in Mamba Point before I came to the States. And so that was basically wow. what a journey. Uh, what a journey. That's that's it seems it seems like all Liberian parents have that same strategy. They wait for you to go to bed. You think that you know everything is okay, you forget, then they wake okay. you up. They wake you up. Yeah, they wake yeah. you up. And I want when they when the west side you can't even know where they're coming from. I know where it's coming from. <laughs> what why are we talking about? what it takes to raise a child we're going to dive into the next segment called what's this again or in the librarian what in this again and what you're about to see now what, what did yes so yeah exactly. what did yes so all right let's watch this there's a scene in my brother that said it's much i can play with that man they can't play with that so watch it again and look at this <laughs> <laughs> that was that guy. That's not me. That was that guy. That's not me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. What in this? <laughs> These black feet says Je t'aime Moussa. Yes. Yeah, yes, in French. I, lo I love you, Musa. Yeah, I love you, Musa. And uh, 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 uh hey, Musa, gotta take these feet. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mr. Gimel, uh, 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 you gotta, you gotta polish them. Uh huh. Yeah. So, Mr. Gimel, this feet, this is a tattoo, right? Yeah. Uh, what, 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 what do you so call it in Guinea Patra? Is it or or uh, Jabi, like, Jabi, Jabi, Jabi? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like a tattoo, Jabi. right? You know, yeah. in the West, in the Western world, they put tattoo on the body to show your, 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 your partner or, name on your chest and whatever. Yeah, your right. partner name on places. This woman decided to put that she loved Musa underneath her feet. Yeah. You were been married for over. You been with your woman for over forty years. Does this woman really love Musa? What do you think about this message? She's stepping on Musa. <laughs> Musa she suffering. Walking, she walking on your head. <laughs> Musa, we are suffering a relationship. That's one thing. So Musa, Musa you might agree know, that a woman love me and stay there. You know, you know, the thing about it is love is expressed in so many ways and fashions. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, uh, for this to remain on her feet <laughs> that she walks on every day. She wears shoes. She wears slippers. She, I mean, wear bare feet, probably go on the beach. And so mm -hmm. we talk about sand on the beach, taking sand on the beach. Yeah, exactly. Probably she ensures that uh, there is no sand on her feet. Oh, to, to test Musa, Musa got to be clean. To test Musa, Musa got to be clean. Okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> they say the L O Vaga Ibu, the love that. I, 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 I have for my partner can be expressed in so many ways. Eh? A strong love, yes, tell Musa, Fanta is saying here, yeah, Musa, come with me. I will walk with you. I will crawl with you. I will swim with you. I will nice take with you. Nice you, safe, you, nice safe. Yeah. You okay. go with me everywhere I go. Okay. That, that's then what you got again. That's different. Uh, yeah. Let's see what else I on what's this again. <laughs> Let me play for you one more time. Uh, oh. Oh. <laughs> was that was that Musa? <laughs> Was that Musa going to look for fun? 
la mujer, la mujer es oso. Eh, he got, he got, he got a cook, he got a cook on, on his head. You know, but these things happen. Yeah. These things happen in, in in real life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you are watching. This is me, and today on this is me, we have Mister. Wow, Michael Gilman. Mr. Gilman, let's, 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 we, we get a uh, few questions that we call rapid, rapid fire questions that we just need quick, short answers to and whatever comes to mind. Nothing technical, nothing detail. Right. All right. So, Casali Reza, Casali Cores or Pamodo Cores, which one you prefer? Casali Cores. Are you kidding me? <laughs> With a crust. In high school days, what, what techniques you used to use when you're studying? What, how, did you, how did you study to retain? Oh, uh, I read I read my notes, my books every evening, and that time come from tests. It's easy to cramp. Okay. Yes. Okay. It's a good man. What's what's the funniest joke you ever heard? <laughs> he asked that question, and several came to my mind. But then, uh, uh, I have to narrow it down to down to this. Uh, 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 oh. Grevo Pape and his wife, and they got they got sons, and uh, 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 they got two sons and two daughters. And so he named he named one of the sons Junior after him. His name was Pa Moses. And uh, the wife the wife everybody you know called the Grevo Oma Sese. So Pa Moses was very hard disciplinary mm. wise on the boys' children that. They should not bring woman in the house and all of that. Mm. No girlfriends. So this day, Junior, Junior was grown. He started talking to somebody at school. And he brought a girl home. He came home, ready to eat. Junior is nowhere to, to feed, to give him his food and water and all of that. Mm -hmm. So... He called, he called a younger brother, boy, boy, boy. Boy I said, yeah, pa. He said, where Junior at? He said, pa, Junior can't be in that room. Oh. <laughs> he said, what did he do that? Ah, pa, me, I don't know. Junior can't bring that girl in that room. I don't know what he do in that room. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <laughs> the papa went to the door, begging at the door. And, uh, you know, this is out of program. So he saw, he saw Gion in the room. He said, Gion, Gion, what are you going to do in the room with that guy? Gion said, Pao, you think we don't know what you can come be doing to our, that one man in that young uno room? Me, uh, <laughs> They can't, they can't be, they can't be sweet like this, sure. <laughs> so, so, I've been calling the old man. She said, oh, she said, oh, go, go, go. Do you go, go bring care in the room? You come back to you. <laughs> so, the old man said, Mose, oh, I told you, you want to come be high on your boy's children. Now, these girls' children, you're supposed to come be high on. <laughs> Can't bring in a room, but thanks for sharing that. It's, 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 it's the same goal, you know. Monkey see, monkey does. They monkey see, monkey see. Yeah. And maybe that's that's the reason why you know we the African children we don't see our parents kissing and, and stuff like that because they want all to start, you know, yeah, jumping into it. No doubt. All right, what comes to mind when you hear like beer and women? One word. Liberal women still or do what? No, when you just hear the name, you just hear the phrase Liberian women. What's the one word that comes to mind? Hot. Is it hot? Yeah. Descriptive. It's very descriptive. So take for all your clothes. All right, we're at the climax of this interview. Um, Mr. Gilman, thanks again for appearing on This Is Me. It's been a pleasure us getting to know who you are and um, sharing your story and giving your life lesson advice out there to our uh, viewing, uh, our audience. One more question. 
if you were to be the president of the Republic of Liberia? Huh? What is one thing you would do to improve the country? In as much as that is hypothetical, this is what we talk about every day, you know, on our show, the Jideha talk about... You say hypothetical, but it's, it's not... It can happen, though. It can happen. Mm -hmm. Because we all see ourselves in a current president, George Weir, coming from nowhere to becoming president of a nation of Liberia today. So it can happen. But yet still, it is hypothetical because you say, what if okay. you are the president? Okay. But uh, 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 in a nutshell, our country is underdeveloped in so many ways. In so many ways. Our infrastructures were decimated during the 14, 15 years civil war. We had an opportunity to rebuild. We did not. When the international community was there for us, with us, by us, supported us, we did not. We did not restore those basic services, electricity, water, or, or, or our education, our health sectors, all of those things, coupled with what we now have in our country, that everybody who has a cell phone is an advocate, is a broadcaster, whether they are saying the truth or not, you know, we have to reorientate ourselves. Our educational system must restore those disciplinary uh, uh, attitudes, those values, okay? Where students will be students, teachers will be teachers, okay? Our advocacy, it's a good thing that we all can be advocates. But it will be better, if not great, if we all can be truthful in our advocacy. We can be civil in our advocacy. We can be honest in our advocacy. We can show leadership in our advocacy. Because in the absence of all of these things, like I've always said, is fraudulent. Okay? In the absence of being honest, being disciplined, being truthful, showing leadership, consistency in all of these attributes, if we don't show them, we are fraudsters, we are fraudulent, we are 419ers. So, like, like your question said, if I was president, we will go back to ensuring that these values are restored. The Liberians become patriotic, nationalistic, or optimistic, that they will welcome development. Okay? Rome was not built in one day. We enjoy all of the facilities in the Western world where we find ourselves as refugees, as tourists, whatsoever. And we want to go back home. We say, why is our country not like this? Okay? But in these United States, the Industrial Revolution, and all of that, when, the, when this country began to build roads and highways and train tracks, it was to put people back to work. Yeah. It was, you know, and so the people were coming. They didn't say, oh, I ain't got no food. They were coming. They went back to work. There was the Chinese. There was the Japanese. The blacks. The Indians. The Irish. The, entire, the Irish. The entire country went back to work. And they said, let's do it. And what happened? Today, when they're building one highway, they're building one bridge, they don't stop the country to go dedicated when it's done. 
because it's supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be done. But today, we build one lane road in Claratown, in the whole community. There's a huge program. And we should do it. If there's a bridge over here built today, celebrate. Because these things should have been done ever since. They were not done. So the people don't get to see what is obtaining. So show it to them. The more they see the growth, the development, the productivity, the more they will appreciate. Well, Mr. Gilman, thanks again for appearing on This Is Me. Um, it was a pleasure hearing from you, getting to know your story. Uh, Patrick, any word for Mr. Gilman? No, Mr. Gilman, just one first of all, nice meeting you. It was a pleasure getting to know you, getting to know the person behind the image we see every now and then on social media and stuff, and to know more about what you're also into. And also, for the first time, I think I've seen you laugh, actually, and you kind of cheered up a little bit. So that, that was another good side of seeing, seeing you, you know, also a good life. So, and uh, your last words are just, there's, there's nothing else I can say to it. It's just exactly what we need. So thanks a lot. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you just watch This Is Me. Stay tuned for the next This Is Me. Who this is will be me. This Is Me on This Is, this is Me. me.